A word for our listeners. Octung Cthulhu is set in the 1930s and 40s. We will be using terms and sayings from those times, including some that could be considered offensive. It is not our intention to offend. We merely wish to offer as accurate a view of the time period as possible. Welcome to Masks of Nyarlathotep, a Nerds Domain Gaming Podcast. Join us each week as our investigators uncover the corruption of the mythos in World War II. Starring George Chimbles, Phil Durham, Rob Walker, Justin Kimmett, Shirley Nedzwicky, and Scott Troiano. With Matt Quiet running the table as the keeper. Eldritch evils and crazed Nazi cultists await you just beyond this music. Hi everybody and welcome back to the Nerds Domain Presents Masks of Nyarlathotep. I'm here with Shirley. Hello. George. That's me. Uh, Rob. Having a great time. Just to Phil. Phil. <laughs> I'm Phil. Hello. And uh, coming in remotely from Antarctica, we've got Jesse. Special Howdy. guest appearance. Yeah. So, um, sorry for the long lapse of time without the episodes out. Uh, we had some uh, shakeup in the people that were going to be here. You'll notice Scott isn't here. Unfortunately, he had to step away from the game. Um, and Jesse is back because we recorded some stuff and it just didn't work well without with scott and then he had to leave unfortunately so nothing works better without me yeah nothing works better without jesse so we're going to kick back into the game uh we've got some new characters you've heard the character um creation sessions for blake yes william Yar. and albrecht um as the, as we went through those already you've also heard a series uh, an episode with shirley Doing some reading and and some other <clears throat> investigations by herself between um, the last chapter and this one. It was with Eva. It was with Eva and also by yourself a little oh, bit. Right. So, so there was a session where Shirley played with herself. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> basically. Um, so uh, we're going to go over a little bit of how the group gets together, and then we're going to jump over any kind of uh, pond. Any kind of uh, travel and just put them in uh, Europe so that uh, Jesse's care can actually get into the game. And we, you know, actually have some action and enjoyable things instead of just boring travel. Yay. So the four of you, uh, Evelyn, Carlos, William and Brian, you are called into the um, into a briefing from um, your your FBI contact. Um, William, you are actually an FBI agent. Evelyn, you're kind of a, I think we left it as you're just a consultant, not really a full agent or anything, but they, they will, they know that they'll be using you as a, an asset in the field. Yes. Same thing with you, Carlos, since you're not American and you don't have a whole <clears throat> lot of inter- interest in becoming American, um, they're going to use you as an asset as well. Um, and then Blake, you have been brought over from the army because you have special knowledge of the occult is what they were understood. Uh, you're also a, a member of, the clergy. Yes, that's what they've been told. Okay, so um, you're brought in, and you're you are given a um, a uh, a breakdown of your mission by Agent Patterson. It's the name that we should write down somewhere, but we're gonna just have to rewrite that list anyway. So, whatever. Patterson. So, <clears throat> Patterson. Who? Uh, Agent Patterson, David Patterson. He's probably not on there. Hmm. I'm making this up, this name up as I go. Oh, thank you, Rob. Um, so Agent Patterson is your contact. You you have met him before. He is uh going to be putting you through any kind of uh any kind of the mission setup and parameters for that. It lets you know that uh. William, you have a contact in Germany that's working for uh, MI6. Yep. Uh, his name is Albrecht. <clears throat> he is uh, he is asking for extraction. He's provided good information on the Germans as well as some of the occult movements, and 
Um, it's clear that he has met a point where he can't continue what he's doing. Um, he's very scared and he wasn't, he, he was never built for this particular thing, but he did it because he felt it was important. You met him a few years ago in London during a training exercise. You were probably there on some sort of fake archaeological cover and uh you went through some symposiums about you know modern cryptology or something along those lines um so they're sending you but you need a backup team so it's been suggested that um, albrecht has been dealing with some more occult focus uh evelyn has a focus in occult understands what it is and what it means carlos they feel comfortable pairing him with Evelyn, they have a good rapport. They were on a previous team together. Um, and Carlos has seen some uh, some stranger things, so he can handle at least some of that. And then uh, Blake, who you probably have interacted with. You've seen uh, Evelyn and Carlos around. C- Carlos, uh, just for our listeners at home, as a reminder, is hard to miss. He has some very serious uh, scarring from burns. Um, what is it on half your face, George? Not quite half, but yeah, like... <clears throat> When he smiles, it cracks. Yeah, it's like around the edges of the side, but okay. not like two face kind of thing. Yeah, like but, but so you could say he cracks a smile. Oh. You could. That was punny. You could, but then he'll shoot you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you've seen them around FBI headquarters. You know that they deal more more with the occult stuff, and that's not something you've dealt with a lot. But um, you know, that from what you hear, they're competent assets, and it's asset in a very non burn it and don't worry about it kind of thing because there are some of those this is this is more of a they're not agents but they're usable so um and then blake you know has been brought over from the army he's a a non-commissioned officer over there um he is also a clergy of some sort you you're not it's a little fuzzy on that but he also is going to be carrying a lot of cult knowledge and uh, theological knowledge um and he's irish he is very irish like Irish from Ireland, not just like was born in America and is Irish, but he's actually from Ireland. Um, so you are given the information that you're going to go in, find wherever this gentleman is at and extract him in a very calm, simple way. This isn't supposed to be high action. This is not, you know, just go in and make a mess of things. This is go in, bring him out. But while you're there, they want more information. So you are going to do some digging and finding out what's exactly going on. You're at your discretion on how that looks. The, um, uh, William, this is not your first time in the field. You realize that <clears throat> oftentimes it is very much left up to your discretion. Um, so this isn't something new, but this is also Germany where you will, if you are caught, you will be hung as spies. So, it's something that's important to not get caught and not get get yourselves killed and then put America in an awkward situation. Do you guys have any questions about the mission? No. Not for Agent Peterson. Do you have any questions for me? Um, I guess I do have a question for Agent yeah. Peterson. Um, when are we to leave? Uh, as soon as possible. It is May of uh, 1939. Um, so he would like to have you guys over there. It's early May of 1939. He'd like to have you over there and back before the middle of June. Uh, uh, has any transportation been arranged? That that th- that can be arranged. It hasn't been arranged yet. It's just how you feel best about getting there. By So it could be by air or by... Uh, there isn't actually a lot of flights yet. Um, intercontinental flights actually don't start officially until June as far as buying air flights. And then they're exceptionally expensive, something like 700 or I'm sorry, $7,000 in current money. So, um, it's, you're going to be going by boat. Um, so your agent is lives and, uh, works in Dresden. Um, but Again, to get the information, you'll need to speak with a group called the Thule Society, which um, surely you and Blake both are aware of. It's a German um, kind of uh, it's a it's a it's a beliefs. It's a group that believes that the uh, 
the Aryan race comes from this old stock of pure human. Um, there's there's talk of a lot of magic possibilities and that kind of thing. They didn't think aliens. Um, I'm sure William did. They have. I thought that that's what Thule believed. No, they be- well <clears throat> they believe that there's an ancient Thule. race that may not have been human, but not necessarily alien as from another planet, but alien as in not human. Okay. Okay. Did you have any questions about Thule? Um, I thought I saw you sit up to ask a question, so. No, I was just uh, getting comfortable. Okay. I mean, I don't have any of this time. I might call upon no, that's fine. That's knowledge fine. at an applicable time. Yeah, absolutely. As my as a player, I'm not terribly familiar, but I assume my character would have quite a bit of Yeah, you, you have some, some roundabout knowledge. So, um... At that point, it's a matter of getting to Europe. We can, you guys get there without a problem. It doesn't matter how that works out. Um, I'm going to assume you go on the most, the quickest route that makes the most sense. So it'll probably take about two and a half weeks to get there. Um, good question. I just want to establish that, um, given, um, timelines of this time, um, <clears throat> my character would have, um, gone to the church and, yeah, made, uh, his movements known. Okay. Okay. Um, so you guys, are you guys um, setting up uh, false identities? However, the FBI would handle that for us. That's actually your call. You, you've been given pretty much do whatever you want, whatever works best for you. Um, they're my research assistants. And oh, because I, I because I'm known. My name is known. I'm published. I'm a known. So you are your own secret I'm, identity. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, that's fine. Yeah. So they would be my. So fi- we they would be, be my, your research assistant. You're my research assistant. You're my field. Or my field agent is my research assistant. What's what's your cult at? Fifty. Okay. So not great, but not bad here. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So um, everybody good with that? Do you need names or anything? I don't think you do. I don't want to be Mm-mm. Greta. Um, actually, uh, Carlos, you may need a different name as yeah. a, as a fight, as a pilot in, um, world war or in the Spanish civil war, they might know of Carlos Aguirre Aznar. Okay. Um, I furnish an alternate name. Okay. Diego Calderon de Leon. There you go. I knew it was there. Do you have the name of the pilot that you fought against? Just real quick. Did I know his name? No. Uh, you knew his call sign or whatever. I uh, thought it was something wolf, the, but in Noctowolf? Noctowolf. that's that's a group, so not that. Vices wolf, Vices wolf, yeah. White wolf, okay. <clears throat> okay, so you guys arrive in Dresden. Jesse, you're still there. Oh, I'm here. Okay, so you guys arrive in in Dresden um, and meet with. Uh, Justin's character, whose name is Albert, you meet with Albert at Albrecht. one of the local uh, beer halls, which would be perfectly normal. Um, Rob, you know that Jesse's character is an artist. He's not terribly great, but he's not terrible either. He's just kind of run of the mill. Uh, he has more of a knowledge of art history than anything. Um, so uh, that that's kind of where you probably would have met with him is right, right at a symposium about art history or something. Like that. Right. So, connected to things. That, yeah. yeah. So uh, you guys meet in a beer hall there. Um, Jesse, you have been told you have been passed information that you're being extracted. That's all the information you know is that you're being extracted and that William is coming to get you. OK. So um, that you know when to when to keep an eye out for them. Obviously, you don't like they, you don't know they're coming in on the 1030 train or anything, but you know that they will be there. You know, that Saturday, between Saturday and Wednesday, sometime around that time. So. And I know to trust these people, right? You know to trust William. You've met, you William. met William and you know William and you've had past interactions with them. You've never met any of the, the rest of the group. Okay. So you guys all arrive. Uh, 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 Jesse, would you ride early to the, to the beer hall to keep an eye out? Yes, I always arrive early. About two hours. Okay. So you've been there for probably right around two hours. It's it's getting into the early evening, um, and the other four of you show up. Um, so. Is one of us keeping a 
kind of just broad watch from a, a distance on the on the beer hall, or we're just all just moving as a single. Well, back? no one's gonna stand back and watch because you're my team, you're my research team. So we would, there's no one. You guys wouldn't. People would think something is up if someone split from the group. Okay. So it's better for us to. Uh, it's better for us to move together and kind of because we're gonna look. We're academics. Right? Yes. So keep okay. that in mind. We're academics. So uh you you arrive at the hall and you all mm-hmm. go in together. Yep. Um the, it's not empty, but it's not full. Um Germany is not in a terrible, terrible decline. People still go to beer halls, but it's also not a normal night. It's the middle of the week. So Right. Um So Jesse, you see the you see the four you see William come in with uh a, a very white gentleman. You red hair, I assume? Yeah, Irish. Clearly, like, you would guess Irish. Uh, a pretty young lady, and then a uh, scarred, uh, scarred, uh, you're probably more Mediterranean skin tone. Yeah. Yeah, a scarred, uh, gentleman there as well. Okay. I'll motion for him to come over to my table. And we'll go. And introduce ourselves. I'm William. You, well, we know each other. Actually, we yeah, probably, it's been yeah, a long we, time. Yeah, we probably greet each other. Yeah, like mm-hmm. uh, yeah, like old friends. Uh, definitely stand up, shake your hand. Yeah, yeah. And then um, I'd introduce you to the rest of the group. We've got Blake, Evelyn, and Diego. What's that now? Diego. Diego. Right. Like, like I said, you got it. Diego, lemon face, lion face, lemon face, lion. Face. Gotcha. So. Um, nice to meet y'all. Nice to meet you too. I hear you have a really interesting dig site nearby. Yes, I'm most interested in getting away from it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Why is that? Uh, how how busy of you said this is an overly busy place? We sat down. You Once probably the sat about, You you sat yourself in a way that you won't be overheard. Okay, what, I'll sit down. Actually, I'll go up to the bar and order everybody a drink. Cause... That's a good question. What language are you speaking in primarily? What's English? Uh, I do. I know. William they don't knows have German. any. We have no conflicts with the right. Germans no, at no. times. So there's no reason why an English academic if... researcher would not have I'd, been invited. Jesse, you speak English, right? Yeah, because you went to London. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I speak English well enough. I'll be speaking in English. Uh, right. Give me a moment. I'll go get a solid drink. Okay. I'll go buy everybody a round of whatever's the cheapest. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah, it's best not to sit around a, a beer area without drinking beers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you bring back beers. Yep. Go ahead. So, yeah, I've uh, seen things. They they Call they gave me this beer. weird drug, and they're they're, they're up to something. A beer. Weird. I just I don't feel comfortable around them anymore. I I need out. Who? A weird drug. Yeah. And what in what way is it weird? Uh well, it gave me visions. Who for gave a you bit. this? Oh, hallucinations. The Thule Society. Did you eat it? And yes. Ingest it? I, I I ate it. It was it like was, a it was like a pill. What did it, it taste like? Swallowable. It didn't really have a flavor to it. But gritty. It was kind of gritty, though. I probably shouldn't have chewed it. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> um, it 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 dropped me into a deep sleep. Can we have it, the people with the cult roll on it and see if we recognize it from something? Yeah, uh, let's go ahead and have before uh, you before you roll a cult. Uh, I'll also mention it, it. It I seen this black sun. Okay. Oh, okay. Go ahead and roll a cult first, and that on, was part on of the, the hallucination. Yes. Part of the dream. Got it. Not six under fifty. On a cult. Um. It, does anybody else have far? Anybody have pharmacology or pharmacy? I think it's called on this. Or medicine would be the other one. And Jesse, that doesn't apply to you. You can't roll any of those. I've got medicine. Okay. Medicine. Go ahead and roll medicine. If you got the occult, got them both. Um. You you've heard of psychotropic drugs being used in rituals before he's vague enough about it even with the comment about the black sun that it doesn't ring any bells directly but that doesn't mean that it's not you know it didn't happen um as far as drugs that would cause 
as far as on the medicine and drugs that would cause you to um to see things like that they're out there um but they're it wouldn't cause this kind of anxiety because you are seeing quite a bit of anxiety from him okay yeah i'm definitely wringing my hands uh, g- give me a second i will down however much i have left in my bottle you mean let me go into a little mug, more detail because these don't have bottles these are just mugs a glass let me let me down my glass stein stein uh, the, the group is called the black sun so I, I guess I shouldn't be surprised that when the, the orb that rose was black, but I was in a valley, and it, it, it felt like I was just there forever. And, and a few hours did pass when I finally woke up, but there's no way as much time passed as I was standing there staring into the black depths. And I, I call it a hallucinogen, even though it was in a dream, because... It's I, I dream about it a lot anymore. Sometimes when I close my eyes, I see it. I don't know what they gave me. Um, anybody with Cthulhu Mythos uh, can roll it. Let me know if you get what's called an exceptional success, which be would be one f- uh, fifth of your number. Which for most of you is going to be probably one or two. No. I didn't get it. Did you get it, Shirley? No. Did you get it, Phil? No. Okay. Um, the description he gives uh, sounds like something, if you got the, the occult earlier, sounds like something that would be considered by some some groups considered this area called the dreamland where your dreams interact with the world and it, th- th- you've never really heard of anybody proving it. It's more of a theory and a concept than anything else and... Usually, the people that come up with the, that that come up with these kinds of concepts are a little lost in the mind already. So it's questionable on whether or not it's an actual, an actual, uh, an actual theory that that's valid, or if it's people have actually lost their minds and this is how they're dealing with it. Us in the academics, we call it a parallel world. This is normal stuff. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's that's another way to look at it. Yeah. He gave you so, the yeah, information. I was just expounding on it. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm done. I went out. All right. Where were you when they gave you this drug? Good question. I was at the Wellsburg Castle. That's close. It's the Webbles. Well, Webbles. Well, the place where the SS headquarters was. George, you're our historian. That's I don't know it off the top of my Webbles head. Wellsburg <laughs> Castle. I can look it up. It's in Western. Uh, I just don't know how to pronounce it. It's in Western. Google says that's not even a word. I just tried. So. W e w e l s b u r g. I guarantee you. Pronounce you it's oh, there w- we go. W e w e l w e w e l s b u r b u r g. We wills burg. Whatever. Well, yeah, there. Them. I was there. In that triangle-shaped castle. And where were you when you woke up? I was still there. What were you doing there? Was this part of a ritual? They told you this was enlightenment, Jesse. It, it was a form of enlightenment, they said. I, I'm pretty sure they knew the drug would make me see what i seen. I mean, they, they called themselves the Black Sun for a reason. I'm assuming they've all taken this drug. Do you know see how the same long... Vision? You were there? Like I said, it was maybe three hours, but it felt like days. Hold on a second. What? Dresden is on the opposite side of the country. Yeah, I'm more. He traveled. Yeah. I I thought you said it was a few hours away. No, no. He was there for a few hours. Okay. Maybe I did. I apologize. But yeah, no. I Yeah. Totally different side of the country. You were saying, Jesse? Oh. You were there for a couple of hours, but it felt like... Yeah, it felt like days. Huh. And how did you get away from them? I just said I would like to go to uh, Dresden. I I wasn't held against my will. I'm one of them, they believe. So they gave you enlightenment. I seen what they wanted me to see. And then let you go. Yeah. And that doesn't sound suspicious to you. Well, kind of does now. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would imagine so. Were you followed coming here? He probably no. That. Uh, actually, Jesse, roll espionage. Uh, let's see here. 25. Does he have any modifiers because he was on the drug? Yes. Paranoia? No, I, no, no. This would have been, I got this, under. This would have been weeks ago that he sent the, the request that this happened. So him being here, like he wouldn't have been under the drug, that wouldn't have caused anything with it. You, you said you succeeded? I did. You feel very confident that you were not followed by anyone who doesn't already, like, it, it, you weren't followed. It's just people that also come here came from the same general area that you did. So unless they were following you prior to this I- I experience, it shouldn't be an issue. Yeah, nobody's nobody's following me. I'm pretty sure of that. Okay. So he wants out. He wants out quick. Yeah, let's go. Uh, well, it's it's not that easy, unfortunately. Never is when they've spent a lot of money to get us over here, and we kind of need to know what's going on. And you're our closest link. So bear well, with us. Actually, need to be introduced to the group in some way, shape, or form. Yeah, we're not going to do that here. Not right here. Right. We can. <laughs> we can do that elsewhere. Yeah. Um, do you know of a good safe house or a quiet location that we could retreat to? I have an apartment. Uh, no, I, I would somewhere else, preferably. Would I know of a place? Mm, that's not something that you would set up. You're really, you're not like in a position to do that kind of thing. Like you yeah. could, no, but you haven't really. really gone through that. Nope. Does our hotel have a bar? Oh yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. All right. I guess, then, uh, are you trying to set up? Are you trying to set up the meet, or are you just trying to set up a different place for us to go talk? No, we'll all go together. I want to go somewhere more secluded than an open pub house. It's a beer garden. Whatever. It really is inconsequential at this point. We could perhaps go back to our hotel well, with the intention to have a further drinks there, and then from there we could get to a <clears throat> more secluded spot. The. Um, Evelyn, Blake, and myself will join Jesse's character. Albrecht. 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 Um, Al. Al. That works better, yeah. Um, Diego, if you would follow behind us in about 10 minutes. So we'll, before we get ready to leave, use the lavatory. We'll start to make our way back, and then if you'd follow us, that'd be great. Okay. Uh, it, as a reminder, Diego, do you speak German? A little. Okay. And Evelyn, you do speak German, right? Yes. Blake, uh, then Blake, you also speak German? Nope. Okay. All right. Okay. Then let's let's do it this way. We'll put um, Evelyn and, and Diego together, and then Blake and I will escort Al back to the hotel. Okay. Yes. That sounds good. All right, so the two, the three of you leave. Um, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Jesse or Al. You pick up the Albrecht. You pick up the bar tab. Um, you guys head back to the hotel. Ten minutes later or so, the other two follow or head back as well. Um, anybody with espionage can roll it. I got a four. Is that under your espionage? I know that's a silly question. My espionage is 26. <laughs> oh, yeah. I made it. Um, you feel pretty confident that you guys aren't being followed, uh, Carlos. Um, n- no one's noticing you that wouldn't already notice you. Uh, you do see um, you see a couple of patrols of German soldiers, but nothing that seems to be following you, just more of a they're moving through the streets. Um. I made it. You made yours. And Mm -hmm. Jesse, you made yours? Yes. There is a little more acknowledgement that there is a clearly German German man walking with a clearly Irish man. And uh, William, I don't remember if we established your ethnicity as far as that goes. He's American. (laughs) And and, uh, clearly. Clearly American. Yeah, probably mostly English, but who knows. Probably Um, closer to your... um, uh, 
English Irish blend. Yeah. So um, you get a couple of looks, but nothing that really screams anything. Albert, do you know that the the Gestapo are made aware of things sometimes, but this doesn't seem like they they aren't like noted noting anything yet. They're just noting you. Okay, if that makes any sense. I am noting them, noting me. <laughs> okay, has been noted. All right, so you guys get back to you all get back to the. Are you getting meeting in the 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 bar there, or are you headed back up to like a room or asking for like a private dining area? This would be around dinner time. We're gonna wait for them, and then we're gonna take supper in our room. Okay. All right. So everything you know, you get supper. It's uh, some sort of worst. And some other German foods. I've had worst. Yeah, I've had worst too. <laughs> um, you guys meet up in the room. Go right ahead. Okay. Um, so here's the problem. Al, we've made it this far, and the our superiors are interested in knowing a bit more about the situation. Um, they want us to play nice, so we're going to play nice. Let's hope. And, um, you're kind of our inlet to that right now. So we have an ETA of the beginning of June-ish to make our way out. So you're kind of stuck with us for a couple weeks. Okay. Okay. What, What kind of information do we need to be gathering? See, that's kind of where you're supposed to help because, um, so what I, I am a scholar primarily. Um, I focus in the occult and the dark arts. Um, Evelyn has a lot of history. Blake has a lot of history as well. Carlos has had encounters from what I understand. Um, so. We're looking to figure out what happened. It was, how long ago was that, Matt? Uh, you mean that Jesse had his event? No, that, um, the werewolf on the boat. Oh, that's been two and a half years ago. Right. So we were trying to figure out what happened essentially two and a half years ago because we still haven't gotten any good leads on what, what happened two and a half years ago. You can tell them whatever you'd like. That's up to you. We killed a werewolf. <laughs> Literally killed a werewolf. Oh, boy. Yeah, that's so, a... so what kind of drugs did they slip you? Yes, it, that's very funny. It wasn't drugs. We're not lying. I thought that you'd been initiated into true knowledge. All I seen was an in, something induced by drugs. Good job. Well, we've been there in reality. Your country is proud of you. Let's be nice, Diego. He's new. Um, do you guys uh, give him any more information than we saw a werewolf? Does he ask for any? I guess not. So we're, we're chasing werewolves? Well, you know, there's a lot of good studies and a lot of good history that, that kind of backs the idea of um, larger beasts that almost simian in appearance. So I'm not really on the boat that it is a werewolf, but there's a lot of potential options out there. I mean, they're talking yetis and we're talking sand squanches and all sorts of crazy stuff along those lines. So what about sonic weaponry? Did you see anything involving that? Uh, Jesse, give me a, a knowledge at half. And we're dealing with something much bigger than animals of any type. 48, I am sure that is not my half knowledge, no. Okay, yeah, you don't know anything about that. I, I didn't see any weapon, sonic weapons? Like like sound weapons? You didn't hear anything. Yeah, no, they're... I mean, they, they might have had a gun, but I'm pretty sure they shot bullets. Do you know what a gun looks like? <laughs> yes. Good. This, this wouldn't look like a gun, but it would be destructive. Hey, Matt. Yeah. Did I see any werewolves? No. Okay. There's no werewolves here. Not that I've seen anyway. So what did you see at this Thule Society place? Well, 
the layout of the castle was a little weird. I mean, it, it is a triangle. Most of the ones that I've known have been squarish. Yeah, it's not that weird. A triangular yeah. castle? It's really not that weird. If it, it isn't? If it fits the, the, the landscape, it doesn't. It doesn't. But this doesn't really fit the landscape. It really There's does. There's room enough there for four walls. No, no. I mean, this the triangular oblong or weird shaped castles are not that out of the ordinary. Okay. With the secret dark society in them. <laughs> That's normal and okay. Technically, it's the home of the SS. So, who knows? What I'm, I'm assuming the drug I took took place in the creepy domish round room with the... No, no. You were probably in the first floor of the basement. You really couldn't tell. Okay. Um, you yeah, were not like, a, was a, like a par- parlor-ish room. Were they wearing just normal clothing? Yeah, yes, although one of them was in all black robes. The one, one that administered was, the drugs. Okay, the guy who gave me the drug was wearing a, a robe, a, a pitch black robe. Could you see his face? There, yes. No. Wait, was he a Catholic yes. priest? Could I? <laughs> yes, you could. Yeah, I could see his face. And it that looked, looked like, like Cuban. What it looked like? Uh, he was a nondescript German man. He looked like a nondescript German man. What does a German man look like? Me. <laughs> He says me. He looked like you. <laughs> oh, I should not have done that. Does that mean he was wearing your face? <laughs> the best part he is that she's a, asking just, this legitimately. So you need to be taking this a little more no, seriously. He, 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 he wasn't. Um, he just looked like an average person. I mean, nothing out of the ordinary. Typical nose, two eyes. There's definitely a mouth. No insignias, no markers, no... Um, Did the FBI train this guy? I, d- I don't know. Uh, no. Actually, William, you do know that he was trained by MI6. Ah. No. Loosely, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, that, yeah, yeah, I mean yeah. uh, you know that he was trained by MI6, and that literally is the end of what you know. Right. Um, You know that... um. He was the the gentleman was just uh, brown hair, um, well kept. No no wrinkles, no blemishes on his face. Slightly wide nose. Nothing really stuck out about him, but you could pick him out of a lineup pretty easily. He was assisted by a young woman, um, very very beautiful. Um, she has an icy gl- uh, stare with very pale eyes, um, and you heard her called. Claudia. Oh, that sounds important. I will give that information to the rest of the group. Claudia. And uh, the gentleman in the robes was just called Sir or Mister or whatever the German is for Mister. Do you have contacts with the Thule Society here in Dresden? No. no, no. How, how did you get in contact with them in the first place? How did you get wrangled into this mess? Well, I wanted to I wanted to help the cause, which is anything that's against Germany. Right. And England felt like this was the best thing for me to do. I'm, I'm not talking about your existence, brother. I'm talking about your, like, how did you actually make contact with the society? What led you to the society? Hmm. So you met a guy. He seemed really cool. You guys became chums, you guys went to the society together, and you found enlightenment, which didn't take. I, I was I was given a contact. Okay. Within the society. I contacted and befriended him, and he got me in. Excellent. Can we... By the way, Matt, what was his name? Uh, that's a good question. Lucius? Yes, his name was Lucius. His name was Lucius. Does he have a particularly sc- skull-like face? No. Um, his name was uh, Dietrich. Bader. <laughs> so there's nothing I can say here. Pretty much no. what? <laughs> nothing. Okay, so... Um, That's a German last name. What was it? What, what was the last name? Bader. Dietrich Bader? Yeah. So... 
Dieter <laughs> Vader is his name. Ba- it's with a B. Vader. B A D. It's not Darth <laughs> Vader. Okay, God, you guys ruined that one. It anyway. is Bader like the guy who does the baiting, or is it Bader as in like B A D E R, like a badger without the G? <laughs> it's German for bathing. Do you not know who Diedrich Bader is? I really, it's not drawing. You know Batman the Brave and the Bold. Yes. You know Batman. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh! It's uh, it's uh, the next door neighbor in office space. Is it ever? Yes. Drew Carey show. Eh. Not as good as Office Space. He's in the Carey show. Excellent in Napoleon Dynamite. I forgot about that, yeah. Anyway. That's right. I'm going to get a roundhouse <laughs> kick from these babies. Forget about it. <laughs> let's get Because I go home to Starla every night. True. Now let's go. So your contact is which one of those guys? Dietrich Bader. Is it the Batman Dietrich version? Bader. The one wearing the American flag pants? Uh-huh. The one who lives next door to a guy in Parma? Or, Definitely uh, the kind of guy that wear American flag pants. Okay, that guy. Got cool. it. In Germany. Got so it. Right German on. flag pants. German flag pants. Got it. Which is really just a giant swastika. That's really not that cool. Well, back then it was. Yeah, this is true. Yeah. This is true. Um, so, um, a lot of Frauleins in Dusseldorf would have thought that was just the bee's knees, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jesse, to give you a little more, you'll explain the following to the group, I'm sure. Um, that you spent about a year going to these um, Thule Society groups. I spent about a year going to these Thule Society groups. You don't have to repeat me. I'll just. I don't have to repeat you. you. Um, the, you you knew that there were other groups that met that that went deeper into kind of the occult and and talked about more and did more. Um, and then finally you were offered a chance to experience that. It took about a year. No one else that had come in had ever taken that long. It's usually a month or two to get to know them. And then they're taken further in and kind of to the next level. You took forever because your, you know, that your enthusiasm was not there. Yeah. You're not a good spy. That's really what it comes down to. It does. So. Um, it had, it had been about a year and then you took that trip to, um, the Western side of Germany and, uh, that's where you had your experience. Did he explicitly state that he believes himself not to be a good spy? Mm-hmm. Jesse, did you state what? it or did you insinuate it a lot? You mean in character? I don't say it at all. Okay. But okay. you, but you insinuate it, right? Oh so, yeah. Okay. I'm- yeah, it was. All right. I, I don't believe all this hocus pocus stuff. So, yeah. All right. Okay. Fair. My heart. You're right. Really in you it. shouldn't be here. <laughs> well, he is, and we'll make do with it. So, um, I'm sorry. Just for a little bit of clarity to me, most of your meetings and work has been done here. And just this one trip was made out there for this enlightenment experience. Yes. When's the next meeting? Saturday, so less than a week. Are there... What, what's the protocol in indoctrinating new... You can bring new people, no problem. Okay. Are there any non-German members... Was there any non-German members? That's a good question. Um, the Austrian, and I use this very lightly, uh, um, ambassador and his staff occasionally attend. You know that in uh, places like Berlin, where there are other um, non-Germans, sometimes they attend. Um, you have seen Italians when a group of Italians comes through from time to time. Um, so it wouldn't be unheard of, and given... Um, William's cover, it might be easy enough to make sense of why you're there or why he's there and why he brought his group. So that, that might work out well. Okay. I could also make you guys look a little more German if you want me to. If you guys can speak. How does one look German? German? Later, Hosen. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know spells? I'm sorry. I will not wear later Hosen. I don't think you have to dear (laughs) 
Al, do you know spells? Spells? No. Said you can make us look more German. No, but I am a master of disguise. Are you? Brian just kind of gives you a funny look and then just goes back to pushing food around on his plate. I don't think we're going to look more German. I think we're going to go ahead and <clears throat> stick with our roles as we've planned them out. You do know, Jesse, that it clearly is not just a uh, group of males. There are a few females there as well, so that shouldn't be an, an issue. Um, yeah. The only thing you would need to do is let somebody know that you were going to bring them, which you can do by just um, sending a letter or uh, dropping by um, Diedrich's to let him know that, that you are bringing some guests. Um, but that shouldn't yeah. be an issue. Have you maintained your connections since your experience? Yes. Okay. I might went out, but I don't want them to know that I went out. Very good. What is your profession that you're undercover with? What is, what is your cover? Artist. I'm an art historian. You're an art historian from... Uh, you know, Je- Jesse, you, or you, you, no, you, yeah, you tell him that you yeah. are from Dresden. Like his, his cover is him. Yeah. He's, he's lived in yeah. Dresden. Why would I be anything person. else? I am okay. Albert von Trotha from the von Trotha line. I'm, yeah, no, I'm fine. Oh yes. The great von Trothas. Yeah. I wouldn't call him great. Some might. Okay. Carlos gives you a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> Al, you're not winning over my group, buddy. <laughs> All right. So, um, to be fair, we're a tough crowd. I was I, yeah. Miskatonic is where I studied, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. So I thought. So that this is not. So me going into the Thule Society is not going to be abnormal with the. No, no, not at all. Well, right, right. And, and even if it's. The worst case, they're going to go, yeah, he, he's not a true believer, but he may have seen things at digs or studied things that, that uh, would be of good knowledge. Like, right, right. You don't have to have knowledge of the occult to have knowledge of archaeological digs, digs and right. that's something you have. And you're not like the world's foremost authority no, on anything. But you, no, no, you know, but I'm, I'm not. You, are, you, know, you have a PhD, so. Right, so. Um. Well, and the, I mean, the Miskatonic name is a popular name. Mm-hmm. People mm-hmm. know of it. So, so if, if it's someone, you know, I've got, I've got my friend from the Miskatonic University who's, who's come to visit. Um, I'm going to be doing work with him. Then it's not going to stand out and be. No, no. Abnormal. It would just be more like, Hey, he's here or he might as well, he might as well see this. Right. And I mean, I would I'll obviously have a passing interest. So. All right. Well, uh, you know what? I think that's a good spot to break. Uh, thank you for listening uh, to the Nurse Me Presents Masks of Nyarlathotep, and we will talk to you guys real soon. And that will do it for us tonight on the Nerds Domain Presents Masks of Nyarlathotep. Remember, you can email us at nerdsdomain at gmail.com. Or find us on facebook.com forward slash nerdsdomain, on Twitter at nerdsdomain, or over at our site, nerdsdom.com. Be sure to sign up for the newsletter while you're there. You can head over to iTunes and give us a five-star rating. We want to thank Josh Shop for our music don't forget, you can support us at patreon.com forward slash nerds domain. And check out our shirts at slash loot.com. <laughs>